That's right. This is the first round of Damn Dog Presents WikiHow the Home Game. This product is not in any way affiliated with WikiHow, and we don't know why you would assume it is. This will be an, an exciting and riveting home game for us all to play. And by us all, I mean only six of us, but you get to watch. And that's kind of like participating <laughs> in general. So here's how this is going to work. Uh, just like our live show in Portland, I'm going to be introducing six. That is right, six individual players. They will be coming up to the screen, to the stage as Bunny Brit introduces them. Um, they will be given a random, and it is a randomly selected uh, topic to read from my board. Once they pick their random topic, uh, the timer will start. They will have five minutes and five minutes only to do whatever they feel like with the content provided to them. And in all cases, and definitely in Adam Bozarth's case, the content will be randomly selected. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, I worked really hard on this thing. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> this is WikiHow the home game. Bunny Bread, who is our first contestant? He's a sound engineer who, ser who served as lead fart production coordinator for the Way and Scary Movie franchise. From Justin Trudeau's Erection, Ontario, Boots <laughs> Ringgear! Come on! It was Boots. my entrance music last hour, too. <laughs> Boots, are you ready to spin that wheel? I'm ready. I also remember that hair. Anyway. Boot, Bing. press the button and spin that wheel. Press. Press. There we go. Yay! Yeah! It's a whammy right away. Uh, Boot oh, no. uh you're going to be uh, incredibly rude to service workers in this document, <laughs> which is called Serve Me Please. Your five minutes starts right now. All right. Uh, Serve Me Please, posted by Springs1 from servemeplease.blogspot.com. So, step one, perhaps? Who knows? Greeting and drink order. The server greets you within three to five minutes. The server writes down the drink order. And right after, the server should go get the drinks, not checking on other tables until the request is fulfilled, unless another table's food order is ready that ordered before the current order was just taken. In other words, when I order, it's my turn now. So don't go greet the <laughs> next table. Now. Don't go greet the next table until you are finished with getting the soft drinks that I have ordered. If someone's food is done that ordered before me, then by all means, do that first. But don't go to two tables to check on them before fulfilling my request. Me, 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 me. Everything's about me. Two, taking the food order. The server writes down the food order and immediately goes after goes to put the order into the computer. The service should be going in order that requests come in. So if table F placed their order just now, then table F's order should be getting into the computer as soon as the server gets to the computer terminal. <laughs> the server should not be going to table D to ask them if they need a refill and grab their finished plates. It does not work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just skip forward a little bit and see how uh, civil we are if the server goes to table D before putting table F's order in the server is delaying table F's food for no reason <laughs> let's skip forward a little bit uh, oh, table F oh. is not getting a full turn because the server went to another table, which is going out of order. It's almost like the server let table D cut in line for a minute or so. <laughs> and, then, minute and then it goes to so. an example because oh I don't know. That wasn't an example. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is something that happened to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, still continuing with point two. All three tables. Oh, no, that's just the point. Three, point three. Clean up work. Bussing a table should be done after a request, not ever before a request. 
example, one time at Chili's, my husband and I finished eating. The waitress uh-huh. asked, did you? we want any dessert or anything else? I ordered a margarita and a refill of my soft drink. Wow. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> and I mix them together. Dinner, 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 dinner. <laughs> my husband ordered a refill and a soft drink also. She grabbed our plates and then proceeded to put them on the table with a cross, which is empty, but had lots of dirty dishes on it. She proceeded to stack plates on top of ours and bust the entire table instead of going to put our owner in. How rude. Oh, how rude. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say how rude? How- <laughs> How wooed. <laughs> you're in Cut big, it out. You're in big trouble, mister. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> um, I could have my drinks faster if she didn't worry about cleanup work. Uh, the, the, the bartender could have already started making the margarita. She could have bust the table right after. Uh, she didn't think of the cut. First time, only her own time. That bitch. Uh, step four: chit chatting with server. Most people want to order their food and receive it in a timely manner, not to make a friend. No, I don't like it when a server starts a conversation with me instead of just taking my order. Stop being human. I came there to I eat a drink, friends. <laughs> and not socialize with the person or people I am with, not the wait staff. Uh, five. Correct order. I think you get it. Six. <laughs> Six. When requesting the check, this should take three minutes or so, not ten minutes. Seven. Ringing up the check. This should be a ten. This shouldn't be a ten-minute wait. This should be around three minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ! This keeps going. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, it really does. <laughs> Motherfucker has some opinions. Eight. Oh, you're an asshole. Overcharging. <laughs> overcharging or undercharging. This is the responsibility of the server. Ah! I'm just gonna throw things around my room for like the next. There you go. Put that around and put this around. <laughs> just gonna throw that around. Ten, nine, eight. eight. What? I think we're a little out of sync. It's fine. Maybe, maybe perhaps. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and we'll just. It's fine. Yeah. I love I'm the idea nice. of just throwing up the open the door to Chili's like I'm not here to make friends <laughs> <laughs> maybe you've heard uh, the saying the customer is always me yeah. uh, two important things that I want you uh, both the readers and the audience to know <laughs> is that uh, in the conclusion of our of our six readings once we are done with our six readings uh, you will be the ones to decide who was the best reader uh, and that person will go on to the championship round that's right they will go on to the championship round to compete against a man who won specifically because he drank his own piss <laughs> <laughs> wait who was that no, he didn't well, so he won our drink our piss. Piss. yeah he won our he won in our herds yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, that was uh, Boots Rain Gear. Thank you so very much. And uh, our next competitor, Bunny Bread. Who is our next competitor? Okay. He's an on-call product tester with Cox for Christ, the only dildo manufacturer <laughs> whose crucifixes, especially type dildos, are blessed by a real Episcopalian priest. From two in the pink, three in the stick, Utah, Frank West. <laughs> Come on down. Yay. Oh boy, I'm just I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. This is for games. <laughs> Yeah, this is the picture. So Frank, Frank West uh, sent me a photo, and he was like, "Here's a photo. I don't think it's very good." <laughs> I like, no, disagree. I think we've got it. <laughs> I think we've got it. The only thing I did was Photoshop an, uh, an insane asylum in the back of it. <laughs> well, I wanted to blingy it, but I admit yeah, that you the similar approach was better. <laughs> so, uh, Frank West, are you ready to push that button? I am very ready to push that button. Frank West, push that button. Boop. My button made a boop. I don't know why. Well, you're better at games. Though. <laughs> oh, it's a wiki <laughs> hell. It's a wiki oh hell. Oh boy. Oh boy. This one is how to make a pun. <laughs> 
<laughs> Get it, swine. Oh. <laughs> Frank West, are you ready? I was born ready. Frank West, your time starts now. How to make a pun. Paronomasia is the formal name given to any kind of wordplay commonly known as a pun. Four footnotes. <laughs> 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 While many might groan at dad jokes that are often puns too bad not to laugh at, a pun well done can impress the palate of even the most discerning connoisseur. An apt pun at the right moment can have a strong effect on those who hear it. To make puns yourself will require a knowledge of the kinds that exist, as well as an understanding of context, timing, and lateral thinking. Part 1. Cultivating your punning ability. Step 1. Step 1 again. Understand the anatomy of a pun. <laughs> There's a lot of steps to this. <laughs> puns take a variety of shapes and forms. Some revolve around the same sounding words, while others are more oriented towards meaning. Two footnotes! Several puns can be used in tandem to make a compound pun. Or... <laughs> compund. Oh, I get it. I, I don't. I haven't gone through this <laughs> thing yet. So I don't get it yet. It's fine, it's fine. Some puns involve words that sound similar, such as the perfect rhyme formed by orange and door hinge. Another footnote. <gasps> <laughs> not the Homonyms. Right with the orange. Homonyms are words that sound the same are especially useful for the purposes of making puns. Homograph maybe I just look at all of the sentences that get footnotes in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Some examples of puns include I wondered why the baseball was getting bigger. Then it hit me. Uh, what, 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 <laughs> I'm pausing for laughter. Move on, move on. What hit you, Is there something that hit you? I'm I so knew sorry. What, I knew a guy who had his left side cut off. He's all right now? Next one. I I used, hmm. okay. I used to be a banker, but then I lost interest. Jimmy Carr, what do you think of that joke? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, oh. Two silkworms got into a race, but they tied. It ended in a tie. Yeah, Two footnotes. Yes, now it's funny. All right. <laughs> don't fuck it up. We're going to skip step two because I don't see any footnotes in there and I don't trust. Oh, same with step. Well, I guess step one, two, and one, three. Step, step one dash four. <laughs> Free association. Free association is where you link terms together that have a similar sense but aren't necessarily logically connected. Words have emotional, historic, and intellectual components that can be humorous in the right situation. Thanks, Data. Comedian Brian Regan <laughs> artfully does this when relating a conversation he had with a teacher. Teacher, what are you speaking? German, Brian? Brian. German. Germain. Germain. Jackson. Jackson, Jackson 5. Tito. Tito! Teacher, Brian, what the hell are you talking about? Brian, I don't know. I don't know, really. Tenth footnote. <laughs> So, so a pun is when you lose the ability to like communicate via speech. Is that yeah? It's like, it's kind of a, it's an aphasia. Like okay. okay, yeah. <laughs> a pun is a lot like playing six hours of Bullet Witch. <laughs> In that regard, <laughs> step one dash five. Notice pun tension with prepositions. Though we string words together one after another, the concepts represented by words form a mental structure that is sometimes unclear. Footnote 11. These ambiguous sentences are often marked with prepositions. At, on, with, near, opposite, etc. And pointing out that ambiguity can get a chuckle from the people you speak with. Footnote 12. I'm so glad that John Toast is watching this so that he can jizz in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Step 1-6. Pun through writing. Footnote. I don't know what that could possibly be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! People sometimes write puns, and it's like just a foot. Inventing a character that frequently uses puns and putting her into interesting situations slash conversations. Footnote 14. Step 1 7. There's so much of this. I am just going to do the footnotes. Watch expert punsters. Every year, the O. Henry Museum in Austin, Texas holds a contest to see who's the punniest of all. Two footnotes. <laughs> Wait, you didn't say the footnotes have footnotes? <laughs> Yes. Quentin Step Tarantino must be loving this. <laughs> <laughs> On to step 2 dash 2. <laughs> People tend to pause for a slightly longer interval at the end of a phrase or while grasping for the next thing to say. And these moments are ideal places for you to make your fun. Put, footnote 17. 
Then you can use the light atmosphere to your advantage and make your pun. Footnote 18. <laughs> wow, and then Ten, it's just like no nine, footnotes. Eight, seven, seven six, five, five four. four. Why do you need such a long article nine, on how to make a pun? Nine, because it is a beautiful eight. and complex art. <laughs> Thank you very much, Frank West, for um, your performance. What? Who? What? What happened? What happened? Never mind. What, yeah. <laughs> what happened is uh, I'm going to have Bunny Bread introduce our next contestant. And yeah. our next contestant was the keynote speaker at 2018's My Dinner with Andre Con in From Wagwan Bomba Clock, Everton, Irene, Montana. He seems to be a slow reader as well because he hasn't made a dent in the internet yet. Lou Fernandez! <laughs> Come on now! Yay. Hello. Hi, Lou. Hi, Lou. I, I understood that you, like, literally just got out of a car before this recording. <laughs> that photo from last year is just exactly how I feel. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, Lou, you seem to be in the mood to push a button. Lou, would you like to push that button? Sure. Lou Fernandez, push that button. <laughs> Stream delay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I was making sure I didn't actually have to push a real button. It's just a, it's a really it's a really heavy button. It's very hard to push all the way in. <laughs> Lou Fernandez, you've uh, got yourself nice. a whammy. That, <laughs> that, that Michelle Bachman deep throated. Yeah, it tricky sure is. It's a corn dog. It's tricky sure is. Oh man, my new boyfriend cannot receive a blowjob like a normal human being. Fantastic. And being it again. <laughs> well, hold on. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, no. My oh, no. boyfriend cannot receive a blowjob like a normal human being. Before I begin, I know this is going to sound like a joke, but please trust that it is real. You can be as skeptical as you want, but I'm the one who has to live out this nightmare. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 24F, have been dating this new guy, 26M, for the past three months, and it's been going swimmingly. Okay. He's charming, funny, not a slob, important. We click yada yada. Sex is all so passionate and usually really good. Okay. His head game is on point, and I reciprocate often. When giving him a blowjob, he is vocal, which can't be said for many guys. There's only Ooh. one. <laughs> There's only one issue. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, fucking guy! <laughs> is that he is chuggo. <laughs> uh, yes, please. Uh, There's only one issue. He has very, quote unquote, he has a very, quote unquote, me, me sense of humor, which I generally enjoy. When I go down on him, he'll squirm and moan, but we'll only oh, see no. variants of give me the suck. Uh -huh. <laughs> In the past three months. Suck spelled? It's, oh, uh, sorry, give me, well, it's spelled S U C C. Uh, in the past three months, I have kept mental note of all the different variant interjections. They include, but are not limited to, <laughs> she suck me. She suck me through my boxers. She suck me <laughs> with no clothes on. This is while suck. you're giving him head? <laughs> suck, baby, suck. Mm, I get the suck. <laughs> oh, fuck. And aboard the suck train. <laughs> How to get the suck. <laughs> He's turning into Johnny Carson. <laughs> I am a suck, but I get more suck. <laughs> 60 minutes of suck. Sucky, sucky long time. <laughs> suck. She want to fuck, but first, she suck. <laughs> no. Damn, she find what she suck. <laughs> Deep suck. He suck me to Mars. He suck me to Antarctica. She suck me to Antarctica. <laughs> she suck me underground. 
Give me that first class suck. She got a master's in suck. She got a PhD. She followed up with a PhD in suck. <laughs> <laughs> PhD in suck is a second language. Suck. <laughs> suck me like a hungry baby. Oh. That is, is, oh. Um, suck me into an existential crisis. <laughs> Give me that suck out of jail free card. <laughs> Come on. I don't just, think that's how the legal system works. Well, have you tried? Because no, that's, I do. that's the problem with American legal system is that, like, the best blowjob people always get off. Exactly. I promise to give the judge the best blowjob I can for you. Uh, suck at 100. The first rule of Suck Club is give me the suck. That makes sense. That's, that's a good rule. I swear this is all he will say. You don't believe me. I failed in nearly every creative writing class in high school, so there's no way I could have covered all that shit on my own. Well, fair That's, enough. I really you don't believe, believe me, me, I'm dumb. Joke category. Uh, at first, I thought I was the funny. I thought it was the funniest thing on the planet. It still is funny, but it's hard to do my job when I can't stop cracking up. It's so oh, funny. The problem is that it's too funny. It's you too may funny. have found the perfect man for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's really, really kismet. Can't. It's getting to the point where I really can't give him oral anymore because I start cackling before we even begin. Oh, kind of horrible. Because it's getting old. But then he will pull out some new outlandish phrase and I grin devilishly as I struggle to pleasure him without choking on my own laughter. It's interfering with our floor play at this point. Floor. Floor play at this point. Oh, we've, floor spoken, play. <laughs> we've spoken about it outside the bedroom, and he doesn't seem to take it seriously. He can't confirm about it without breaking down into bouts of laughter. And it's, I kind of don't know if I wanted to stop because it's so goddamn ridiculous. Please Nine, don't figure this out. It's eight, a problem. Sort of seven, seven, six, six, six five, 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 four, five, four, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Oh, oh, Ooh, Fernandez, everybody. So, Ooh, Fernandez, Thank suck you. me like a champ. Thank you. So that was written by the boyfriend, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I, I was just getting wicked rap pad vibes from all of those yeah. sucks. <laughs> the first rule of suck club is give me the suck. Suck Once club. Again, suck club. Again, give me the suck. Give me the suck. At the end of these readings, it will be up to you to decide who was the motherfucking best. But Bunny Bread... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Boy says, "Ah, come on, suck a guy." <laughs> <laughs> Bunny bread. Who do we got next? He's been a life coach now for the past decade with such notable clients as Little Pump, Ben Affleck, and the prodigy's Keith Flint. From <laughs> this ain't the Golden Girls XXX Vermont, J. W. Friedman. <laughs> <laughs> come on, J.W. Friedman, are you ready to push that button? Ready to slowly push this incredibly heavy button. Okay, it's a real heavy button, so push that button. Push. <laughs> you're, you're just talked. That's a good button. <laughs> It's more complaints about weight stuff. Please. Yes. <laughs> no. Yay. Finally. <laughs> weight stuff haven't had it easy on our show for too long. No, <laughs> your chill. <laughs> JW Freeman, Freeman, before I send you this, and this is five minutes, you have five minutes to read this. JW right. Freeman, before I send you this link, how many pages do you think it is? Oh, God, it's going to be like 24, huh? Correct answer 18 pages. <laughs> JW Freeman, your five minutes starts now. Ooh, restaurant pet peeves list number two. Ah, you know what really ticks me off? Stuff like this. What are some things that annoy you when you are getting service in a dine-in, non-fast food restaurant? Servers, why do you do some of these things? And why do you think they will help your tip? Why do you think you aren't at fault if something you can easily tell is your fault? What are the ones you agree with? What ones you don't and why? If you don't agree with it, why? If you do agree with it, tell me why, brother. Some of mine are as follows. 
One, when you ask your server for your check, they ask if you want dessert, as if you didn't just answer their question already. Yeah, I think that's irritating. Personally, I know they have to upsell, but as the customer has told their server they want their check, then asking them about dessert makes no sense, since they're already stating that they are full and or they want to leave by requesting the bill. What a rush! It's just wasting time, and we have taken off the tip for some of it because they needed it. Listen to what we just said. Now I stack of bills on the table and I'm taking one off every time you do something wrong. Damn it. Listen up close. It's just common <laughs> courtesy. <laughs> just common courtesy, Hogan. No, two. When your server leaves before you get a chance to ask for everything that you want or only ask one person, not everyone at the table if they need something. I'm so tired of servers doing this. I am trying so hard to run my server, but most of them seem too lazy to get out their pad and pen, but then complain they ran me on the internet about it. It's like, gee, if you just would have been ready to take down a list of all the things I could have told you in one trip, and could have gotten everything or mostly everything done in one trip. Also, it slows the customer down lots when servers do this because now I have to wait until you're basically cutting now, attending to another customer before I can ask for what I originally wanted way before it was the other customer's turn. God you want damn to talk it. About some actual like underlying issues that you might be having that, uh, that make you say these things? Yeah, the underlying issues like with the servers. Well, I'm very Wonder angry. How- I am very angry, and uh, you know, like uh, it's, there's there's this whole problem with meth. Uh, number three, when your server doesn't do as you ask, you ask for a box, they bring you a bag. I said box not a bag. You ask for a to-go Coke, they bring you an empty cup to pour your own Coke into. Basically, not listening to you. Similar in a way to number one. Uh, blah, 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 from, blah, from blah. The, uh, from, from the uh, chat, uh, Liz Biafin says, My God, is that Karen's music? <laughs> <laughs> Over here. You listen up. Number five, servers pour new iced tea and old iced tea that's already watered down. If I wanted a glass of watery tea, I'd be home. It's not iced tea anymore. If it's mostly water, that is it. Fine. <laughs> Hang on a second. Yeah, yeah. Number six, making comments about what you'd ordered or how much you ordered. Yeah. I just recently no. had a waitress comment about something that I ordered. She said, I was going to say you can eat because I ordered something before I had a chance to say to go. It hurt my feelings. And she got a lower <laughs> tip because of it. You don't tell your customers about portion sizes. Oh, yeah. oh, it looks like you're only getting one, one quarter instead of two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one wants to hear that they ate too much or ordering too much. Also, to-go orders are sometimes for other people as well. Yeah, two servers have said, are you taste testing? Just because I switched margaritas from one that was orange flavored to a regular one at Chili's, oh, of course. <laughs> That's just nosy and mean. Why would a server ever ask such a thing? I just don't get it. If I were to taste test, I would have not have drank my first one and sent it back, would I? I mean, really, that's just me. It's me. Me. Not like me at all. You sent it back. You said, you said, excuse me, this orange flavored chilies margarita is not up to my standards. (laughs) God damn it, it's too orgy. (laughs) Can't even taste the cheap, well, tequila. All right. How about this? Servers that don't write orders down. Yeah. You come back to the table to have me ask again what I already told you. Then do you think you will get a good tip for being lazy? Also, by not writing it down, you have no way of verifying what I originally told you if you end up pushing the order in wrong into the computer. When I had a waiter that admitted I pressed the wrong button when he brought me quesadillas instead of barbecue chicken nachos, he wrote the order down, but pressed the wrong button. He did two mistakes. Yeah, two (laughs) mistakes by not putting in the order correctly and not serving it obviously correct, which honestly, only putting the order in wrong was a real mistake. The other was intentional not to check over what he was serving us. That's just a sign not to study for a test. It's just being lazy. Mistakes aren't intentional, but that was in the sense that he didn't want to do any work for his money. God, servers not doing things. Uh, 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 J.W. Freeman, everybody. Let me tell you something, me, G. (laughs) Strong words from the Macho Man. Yeah. Hey, did you know that before he died, he did cocaine? (laughs) What? 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 Like, just once, right? 
Bunny Bread, I would like to know who is next. Bunny Bread, who is next? Let me tell you who's next. Our next contestant is a heartwarming story after recently overcoming a life-ruining addiction to Axe Body Spray. Though the medical professionals at the Betty Ford Clinic pronounced him too drunk to live, but too horny to die. He seems to be doing okay over a half halfway house in Goat Vajazzling MP4, Indiana. Bunny Bread! Bunny Bread! Hooray! Oh, Bunny Bread! Oh, yes, that's me, Bunny Bread. I don't think mm-hmm. anyone, I don't think anyone's yet figured out where I fucked up the coding of the big board. Bunny Bread, would you like to push this button more than anything in the world? Bunny Bread, please push that button. Push! <laughs> Here it comes. It's it's coming. coming. Getting so pushed. Oh yeah, there it is. There it comes. Oh yeah. Delays. Come on, part three of bitching about culture service. <laughs> Bunny bread, it is time for you to teach the Xbox audience how to kill famous bands in Dog World. Everybody already knows this, don't they? Oh, this shit. I gotta get okay, 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 okay. All right, folks. I'm glad I gathered you here for this important, <laughs> important piece of well, life affirming everything. How to kill famous <laughs> bands in Dog World. Famous bands are great, but not on the popular game Dog World. Some bands will flee when the player is detected, but others will spawn and attempt to kill. Trying to build something like a shelter or a hut, like players do on Minecraft, will cause bands to spawn if it's dangerous enough. If you're tired of being chased or interrupted while building or exploring land, then this is the article for you. That means it's off to a good start, but still has room to grow into a more helpful resource. Until the article reaches its full potential, it will be hidden from search results. Can you help it flourish? Are you a bad enough dude to help kill famous bands at Dog World? If you think the article offers complete and accurate instructions, feel free to remove this tag. Anyways... (laughs) I haven't understood a word that I've said. Jerry and the pacemaker. I'm sure that's about to change. Stay inside your shelter and do not come out, Jerry. Jerry and his band may attempt uh, to destroy the settlement in order to get you, but this isn't always the case. Have weapons with you. Hmm. If you must come out of your shelter during nighttime, taking uh, taking along swords and guns and knives is the most effective way of defending both you and your home. From Jerry and the pacemakers. Yeah, from Jerry and the pacemakers, of course. Throw rocks at Jerry and his band to scare them away. Now, three, fight back. Fighting back is the most complicated thing to do, but it saves you. Try to wound one band member using a sword and another using a gun. Kill the leader somehow, and this will prevent the band from attacking back. So the steps are uh, stay away, uh, fight back, and kill them, and there you go. The Beach Boys, be aware. That's a, That's a good Beach Boys song. That's a hot Beach Boys hit right there. Favorite Beach Boys yeah. song. Number one on how to deal with the Beach Boys. Be aware that attacks from the Beach Boys are more likely to occur when you live on or near a beach. Uh huh. Two, if you are outside when you first see the Beach Boys come over the hill, run as quickly as you can back to your shelter. Three, stay inside your shelter until the. Until, what, 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 what? What? All right. No. Nothing. Okay, great. <laughs> this is the Beach Boys. Now, please sit down until it's your time to ask questions. Respect Stay inside your shelter until the Beach Boys get bored or leave until morning comes. Then you can come out and but be aware of your surroundings. Use weapons now. If all of the above steps fail and the Beach Boys are still attempting to hunt you down, fight back with those weapons. Choose any weapon you have from your toolbox and go for it. So, strategy, go for it. Fight back. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey. Go for it. The monkeys. One, jump into a lake dog and world. stay there. The monkeys may follow you, but they cannot get to you because they cannot swim. Two, use fire when battling the monkeys. Some band members are afraid of fire, while others are not. Three, after you defeat the monkeys, observe your surroundings carefully and make sure there are no other bands watching you. <laughs> <laughs> you got that? Good. Yep. 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 in dog Yo. world. Oh, okay, now, uh, next up, I the queen, the not queen, the queen. Get away from the queen as fast as possible now. They are not afraid of intruders who are invading their territory. Do not go near them, period. Well, I think I can skip the rest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> next up, the Rolling Stones. All right, one, if a band attempts to pounce on you, jump to the side. Now turn oh. to the left. 
Cha cha right now. <laughs> oh wait, are we doing are we doing the time warp with the Rolling Stones? What is yep. that? <laughs> Two, use weapons of your choice and do not give up until you defeat the Rolling Stones. <laughs> you hear that? More important stuff. Don't give up. Three, run back to your camp. Legally incitement. Yeah. Three, run back to your camp if you think Mick Jagger or Keith Richards are attempting to hunt you down. That's did just good these, advice for anything. Do these life. tips also work in Cat World? Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the Beatles. Keep calm, still, and quiet. The Beatles are the most territorial bands ever, and they will not stop chasing you down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's Two, true. make very little noise. If possible, hide behind a bush or inside your house. Three, if you are stuck in outside without a home and the Beatles are stalking you, quickly find water and jump into it. The Beatles, like most bands, cannot swim. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking and, hear that? <laughs> yeah. And so they will probably just stand on the bank, looking angrily at you. Four, as soon as the Beatles leave you, quietly but quickly slip out of the water and make your way back to your settlement. If you do not have a settlement of your own, purchase items from the store and build one. All right. Dave Clark Five! Remember that the Dave Clark Five are the weakest band in the game. They fucking suck. They all have a health value of seven and are usually shy and timid. Two, purchase a bag of poison from the store and poison all the band members. This should kill all of them within a couple of hours. All right. Now, tips. Because those things weren't tips before. Five, right. four, three, three. Is different. You're going to have to kill them if you don't know who they are. One. Oh, fuck it. You're going to die. Oh, God. <laughs> Funny, bro. <laughs> Everyone, please look at the amazing drawing. It's really it's good. good. <laughs> well, let me uh, let me switch streams back so that we can do exactly that thing. I spent that whole time googling Dog World, and this is not a game. This doesn't exist. <laughs> really? This yeah. doesn't really? exist. What? There's a game was... called Dog World. It ain't this. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Anyways, enough about Maybe it's a different band, a different game where you get to kill bands. It's probably, yeah, that's it. It might have been like Puppy World or, or Dog Land. Okay. Uh, so it is time for our final contestant of this hour. Now, there's a couple things I want you to remember, which is what, what you need to keep these readings in mind because you're going to, in a moment, you're going to vote on who was the motherfucking dot best. Uh, of these readers, um, and that person will go on into the finals. Bunny Brad, who is our last contestant? Our final contestant of the evening is already feeling lucky about tonight as he recently won a contest to have dinner with former presidential candidate Herman Cain. <laughs> 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 From not for vaginal use, Louisiana, Adam Bolton, <laughs> come on down. Hello. Hello. Oh, Adam, Adam, so good to have you. So good to have you. Now, now, Adam. Uh, yes. I wanna, first of all, I don't want to take you aside. I want to thank you. I want to thank you because not only for the Portland uh, show, uh, but also for this garbage day. For, you know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of uh, different ideas that we have to keep. There's a lot of uh, schedules that we have to maintain. There's yes. a lot of things. And and so for both the Portland uh, show uh, and for this uh, this WikiHow show, you were yeah. very helpful in providing a bunch of content uh, yes. for this. That's so true. to that end, yes. just thank you. Thank you. Thank you is all I want to say. You know, you're welcome, Lemon. Thank you. I do appreciate it. It was now a privilege to do so. It is an honor. It is an honor for me. So with that said, would you like to push the button and figure out which piece of random content will be made available to you? Of, of course I would. Here okay, I go. That's fantastic. <laughs> just push. push! Oh, you got it. Push it! Push again! I pushed it real good. Oh. Oh. I pushed it too hard. Ooh, baby, baby. I pushed it too Ooh, baby, hard. Ooh, baby, baby. Ooh, baby, baby. So annoying. I'll, I'll let you know later what it is. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, no. Very nice. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, uh, Adam Bozer. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Bozarth, our final performer for this hour. Would you like to tell us about your big dick? Can't believe you doxed me. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Clock starts now. Opening. Opening. Do people ever get doxed about their dick? Big dick dick dox. Th this is a true big dick story called I Could Finally Go Wild. 
So to start, I would like to describe myself a little. I'm six foot five, tall blonde hair, kind of fit build, but not crazy ripped. And I'm packing quiet a lot. Five inches soft and 10 hard, 25, 26 centimeters. I've had a few curls before and they were all shocked every time they saw my little friend but none of them were able to take the whole thing or let me go wild and feel satisfied last <laughs> they wouldn't let you go week wild. I was at a party one of my friend <laughs> one of my friends from college was holding it in his parents house and Your there dick? I saw her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And there I saw her. Girl, I had math lessons together. Sandy. She's quiet short. Five, five, three foot. But she got best no, pog. It's five foot, three foot. Five foot, three foot. But she got best pog I ever seen. She was wearing also very tight dress. So... It was even more appealing to everyone what a juicy booty was hidden there. <laughs> what juicy pirate? booty is hidden there? What juicy booty be hidden there? <laughs> I, I came in that case. I came to her and started some small talk and we drinked beer and <laughs> as time flew we ended up in the bead room. The bead room. <laughs> <laughs> Kissing while literally riping each other's clothes. <laughs> Woof. While I was massaging her pussy, I starting B to get hard, and she grabbed my cock and gasped, shocked, but instantly went on her knees and took of my pants. She took of my pants. She took of my <laughs> pantaloons. <laughs> she was slammed. In the face by my half erect cock. Wow! <laughs> she said it's the biggest Oing. cock she has ever seen. I told her that's not even fully hard. And I love this moment because bitches start looking with glimpses. Oh, yeah, the glimpses are back! Oh, yeah, yeah, multiple, yeah, a multiple of glimp we of fear. The in her, uh, but she grabbed my cock and started sucking me hard. <laughs> she gave me the suck, but not ordinary blowjob. She started with deep throat, and it felt amazing. So amazing that I got instantly rock hard and couldn't control myself. So I grabbed her head and started. Oh, yeah, you, I'm. Is there. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't give you. I didn't give you a lot of content. <laughs> I know, but it's. I'm Although sorry. to be fair, this is your five minutes, so you do. I know she back. started. I so I started and I grabbed her head and started face fucking her for quiet <laughs> a while until I cumed <laughs> a lot <laughs> in her throat, and I was excited <laughs> that I forgot most of the girls. Choked only with half of my cock in her mouth, so I oh pulled it out God. fast, but she was perfectly fine. She even swallowed everything and started <laughs> licking my dick, asking for more. Uh -huh. mm. like, a, yeah. like a streamer, yeah, that's right? That's how it works. <sighs> more, please? Sure, hold on. Please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh my god, the sanguinary novel drawing right now. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's, it's amazing and awful. Now you're finished, but can I have just a little bit I, more? I love that she's doing shrug emoji. <laughs> <laughs> They're both what doing it. Do? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> <laughs> then I realized that I don't have to hold myself back and threw her on the bed and she nice. uh, only asked for me to wear condom first but I had better idea I grabbed her hair and fat ass and <laughs> rammed my cock inside I guess of her oh, hair what? <laughs> her hair oh her hair that's oh. good thing <laughs> okay. bitch gasped MD started squelling but didn't ask to stop so I Started two pounding in her doggy style position like some rabbit or wild animal. It felt amazing. Even after I cumed once in her, I still fucked her ass sleeping. Ten, it nine, and pulling eight, her. Thank you. Seven. Uh, six, I hope she don't chicken out. Five, next four, time. four, three, three two, two, one. What? And she got it from, she's saying, yeah. <laughs> 
All right. So with I don't all know of how, that, was that, was that with funny all, or? No. <laughs> so with all of that, it is now time for you, the audience. Uh, Time's to, up. To go to motherfucking dot best. That's right. Motherfucking dot best is a live voting platform that I built. Uh, and then rebuilt again because I had to rebuild fucking everything to make it work for garbage day. So this is our uh, live voting apparatus. You can see here in the primary stream, uh, these votes are going to be tabulated. And I will tell you when these votes are counted off. So go ahead and uh, do whatever you like with the voting. And while you are voting, uh, hmm. Bunny Brad, do you have a little rap you want to bring in? I think I have a little bit of a musical interlude for you now. <sighs> hey, you're doing right. good. Health is very important to me. Diets, you know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Butter on a Pop-Tart, people! Okay, yep. Huh? <laughs> Have you ever put butter on a Pop Tart? It's so freaking good. Have you ever put butter on a Pop Tart? If you haven't, then I think you should. <laughs> I was sitting in the kitchen one day and I was itching to fill up my belly with a pipe and hot jelly of the best damn motherfucking goddamn treat in the whole motherfucking world. <laughs> I'm talking pop tart. <laughs> 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 I'm talking pop tarts, and I saw a stick of butter, and it almost made me shudder and scream like a baby girl. <laughs> I don't want a giant penis or a rocket ship to Venus. I don't hey. want to win the lottery. I just want to squat and gobbly till I'm dizzle and I wobbly and a butterfruit and dough tart dream. So I put butter on a pop tart. It was all freaking good. Have you ever put a pop tart? Have you ever that? I think you should. Pop tart. Chicken tastes like wood. Pop tart. Pop tart. Pop tart. Pop tart. Encore? <laughs> I heard that. All right, pop tart. Pop tart. You know, uh, we're gonna we uh, we can we can close this off, and we will close this off. And I'm pretty sure J W Freeman's going to win. But now that I have the opportunity, uh, uh, J W Freeman, let's see how this goes. Uh, do you got the doc open there? The 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 rat pad document. I I do have the rat pad document open. Fantastic. I want you to scroll down to page number ten. Uh, and then I need you to read Mountain Dew rap. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm closing the poll soon. Sitting in the dusty corner of the room, all I can think about is Mountain Dew. Original voltage, code red and Baja Blast, all except the one in the last. But I'm past that. Put it all together to get a concussive blast. And then I take my mouth on a taste journey. But my brain has a one-way ticket to Fern Gully. Mountain Dew goes down my mouth hole, and it comes out with my soul. And believe me, it won't deceive me. But I'm making this rhyme in the past of my time. Guitar solo. Where did, where did, where did? <laughs> Mountain Dew. 30 seconds later. <laughs> Mountain Dew. All the other sodas don't compare. Mountain Dew is the only one I want to share for the ship I can't see. There's a burning flame inside of me. My shirt and my shoes and my pants and hat all go together in my Mountain Dew rap. Word. Yeah. Mountain Dew rap. It's a Mountain Dew rap. <laughs> hey, hey, if we still got time, I would like to give a tribute to someone. Okay, uh, fuck it, we don't, but screw it. It's the Jack Chick. <laughs> it's one more go, ahead. go ahead, whatever. We're going to give a little thumbs out to my mom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> my mom is so hardworking. She always supports me. Makes me milk with chocolate chip cookies. Yum, yum, delicious. Gobble them up. <laughs> oh, shit, it's that cake. Cowboy, that's what's up now. I got food in the fridge. I got food in the pantry. Mommy keeps my house fully stocked with candy. All right, peace out. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks, With Mom. that, I am closing the polls. Thank you all for voting on motherfucking dot best. J.W. Friedman, you are the champion of this hour. Congratulations. Uh, oh, all I had to do was shred my vocal cords. <laughs> uh, a well, a well-deserved belt, and that means that you have two options. So you can participate in the finals, which I believe is hour like twenty-three or something equally as ridiculous. Yeah, I yeah think it, is. it is hour 23. So you can, so that means that you can carry over into hour 23 uh, of Garbage Day, or you can nominate somebody to go in your place. I'll do it. I'll do it for sure. Nice. Fantastic. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so coming up in the next hour is. Uh, yay. Drop the move in. So hopefully much. that. Hopefully that. Seventy five hundred. Oh my gosh. I hope. By the way, uh, I hope somebody did manage to screenshot sixty nine, sixty nine, dot sixty nine. Because I know no, that that happened. We met. We overshot it. 
Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, uh, so uh, coming up in the next hour is Jack Chick. Yeah! Yep. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so, stick him. around. We'll be back soon. <laughs>